Good evening once again and welcome to our devotional. It's good to be back. Shall we go ahead and pray? Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord God, once more, as we're about to partake this food from heaven, empower us, O oh God. Give us blessing of understanding and wisdom. Empty ourselves that you may have, O oh God, room to really fill us up. Thank you so much for hearing and answering us. In the love of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Who is the murderer? That is the topic of tonight's devotional. First John 3.15 Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. We all familiar with the first murder that happened on this planet Earth. The story of Cain and Abel teaches us several lessons. Take note that Cain is the older brother and Abel is the younger brother. Cain took care of the farm while Abel took care of the animals. Genesis 4, 3-5 says, In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord and Abel also brought an offering fat portions from some of the firstborn of this of his flock. Now the Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering. But on Cain and his offering he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry and his face was downcast. Now let me ask you a question. Do you think if Abel was assigned to take care of the farm and came to take good care of the animals, that the situation will be different. Would Abel have offered fruits and vegetables and Cain would have sacrificed the fat portions of the firstborn animal? What do you think? Now, remember at, at this time, God had already instituted the sin offering to Adam and Eve by bringing an unblemished animal to be sacrificed. Now in Patriarchs and Prophets 68.1 it reads, The sacrificial offerings were ordained by God to, um, to man to, to be a perpetual reminder and a penitential acknowledgement of sin and a confession of his faith in the promised Redeemer. They were intended to impress upon the fallen race the solemn truth that it was sin that caused death. Now to Adam, the offering of the first sacrifice was the most painful ceremony. His hand must be raised to take life which only God could give. It was the first time he had ever witnessed death. And he knew that had he been obedient to God, there would have been no death of man or beast. As he slew the innocent victim, he trembled at the thought that his sin must shed the blood of the spotless Lamb of God. This sin gave him a deeper and more vivid sense of the greatness of his transgression which nothing but the death of God's dear Son could expiate. And he marveled at the infinite goodness that would give such a ransom to save the guilty. Now a star of hope illumined the dark and terrible future and relieved it of its utter desolation. Both brothers Cain and Abel knew very well what God wants for the sin offering. Yet who did the will of the Father? Those of you parents who have two sons or even twins can attest that both are unique individuals and not the same. The other may be outgoing while the other may be introvert. Now, Sister Ellen White described the characters of these two brothers, Patriarchs and Prophets 71.1. Abel had a humble and spirit of loyalty to God. Abel saw God's mercy and justice, while Cain had an attitude of a complaining heart. Cain had an attitude of rebellion. 
He did not accept the curse pronounced upon the earth and the human race. He allowed his defiant ideas to dwell in his heart and mind and Satan took hold of him. Let us revisit the question that we asked. Would it have been different if Cain was the one who took care of the animals and Abel was the one managing the farm? The answer is no. The act of rebellion and murder starts from the heart. The heart must come to total submission to the master. Hating someone is easy when the heart is not fully submitted to the master. Now our Bible text is clear. Do not be deceived, my friends. Our God takes sin seriously. Let us read it again. 1 John 3.15 Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. This is quite a challenging um, situation for each one of us. Those who have gone through some difficulties, conflicts in the family, brother, sisters, mother, son, daughter, to father, or anyone amongst each of the family members. This is something for us to think deeper, harder, clearer, and may the Lord God touch our hearts right now so that we may fully comprehend that we should value others more than ourselves, that we should love and not hate, that we should show inspiration, compassion, that that compa compassion that we have should flood in our hearts so that there is no room for hate, sin, and other evil things. That we should submit our hearts so that God can purify and change it and our character be like Jesus. May this is your prayer tonight. Come with me as we pray. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord God, once more, thank you for your grace, mercy, and love. Thank you for the inspiration tonight. Oh God, who is the murderer? Oh God, easy to judge to others. But Lord, help us to think ourselves that even in our own thinking, in our heart, before we even do it, we have sinned already against you, Lord. Please invoke in our hearts, in our minds, oh God, the things that are spiritual, the things that you want us to change so we become the better uh, Christian, the better version of us, oh God. Change us, mold us into your likeness. And may the character of Jesus, oh God, be upon us that we may transform from glory to glory until we come in the clouds of heaven that we will be ready to meet you and be with you for eternity. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering us. In the love of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you once more. I hope you are blessed tonight's devotional. I'll invite you again to come tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye.